Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video with me today. Uh, it's about triangulation. It's a common question I'm asked and it's something that if you've been in emotionally abusive relationships, it's something that you've probably encountered and experienced, maybe not even realize it. So I'm gonna get into what it is and, and how to avoid these kinds of relationships, things like this. Before I get into it, I'd appreciate it supporting me by subscribing to my channel right down below, voting on it up or down and share, comment, ask questions. Thank you very much. So triangulation, uh, a lot of these, a lot of these terms that we use in narcissistic, abusive, controlling, manipulative relationships, a lot of these terms are used in politics. Um, so in politics, triangulation is positioning oneself to appeal to both sides of government. So in the United States, we have a two party system really. And um, you'll, you'll see this kind of positioning all the time. And they want to appeal to both sides, right? For power, things like this. So if, if you look at that aspect of it first, because there's different, different kinds, different forms, different degrees, for sure, different reasons that somebody triangulates. Um, if you look at that aspect, to appeal to both sides, it's, it's, it's not commitment, right? If a politician is committed fully to their side, their base, which isn't good, right? But if they fully are, then they aren't going to try to appeal to the other side, okay? Um, but if you have a, someone in a relationship that's doing this, trying to appeal to other people, it's like real no sense of commitment. You know, it's like availability. I'm going to keep my options open, isn't it? I think of that. That's what I think of. Um, it's a security threat. It's gaslighting. It's manipulation. It's emotional and psychological abuse. Awful, awful, awful. When I say psychological, that means that it stays with you. It can mess you up for a very, very, very long time. Um, I talked a lot about Amber and Johnny Case lately. And it's just, I do it because it's just a great, um, great example. It's out there for you guys to see. So there's a part of this case where Amber, and, and you know, Amber's trying, tried to make Johnny look like Johnny was the insecure, jealous type, the whole relationship, right? She said this many times. This was the, one of the big, besides Johnny abuses her, also Johnny's extremely controlling and jealous and doesn't allow her to be around anybody and all this. What we know now is that Amber cheated on him throughout the entire marriage. Um, there's witnesses, security guards, says it was like a different person every night, sneaking up, sneaking out, men, women. We have, now there's literally video documentation of her sitting there cheating on him in his home when he's not there. Um, and she, there was an incident where they flew on an airplane. They traveled. I, I can't remember where they went this time. Who, who cares? They traveled together on an airplane. And they, uh, there was a female on the airplane, uh, actually a stewardess. Uh, I'm sorry. Can't call them that now. Flight attendant. And um, a female flight attendant. And Amber was saying that Johnny was so jealous of this girl on the plane. He just wouldn't stop. He just wouldn't stop. He just wouldn't stop. If you're sitting on a plane with somebody, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, someone you're committed to, like they, they were married, why would someone... Say, say Johnny was totally insecure, totally jealous, all that. Why would he continue the whole plane ride about her and the flight attendant Unless the flight attendant was sitting there with them and giving Amber a lot of attention too, right? I mean, I just don't see, you know, I know there's extreme jealous people out there and insecure. I don't know, Johnny. Maybe he is. It doesn't make any sense at all unless she, and then she, in that same story, in the same story where she's talking about this plane ride with the stewards or the flight attendant, she, she says that the flight attendant was hanging out with her a lot and even sat down with her, even took drugs with Amber. Amber took drugs on the plane and gave some of the drugs to the flight attendant who took them. I uh, hope oh, she still has a job. <laughs> uh, interesting. So that makes more sense that he's going to be insecure and jealous. Now, one thing that abusers will use on you, which is just disgusting, 
right? They'll make you angry, impression project, and then once you exhibit any kind of anger, you're angry, you're an angry person, you're so angry. Or they'll threaten your security and try and get you and, and talk about somebody else and they may like somebody else, someone's flirting with them and stuff, and it makes you insecure and they'll go, God, you're so insecure. Amber said, he is always jealous and paranoid of me cheating on him, especially with women. Well, Amber, you've had prior relationships with women, right? And you triangulated him with women on this plane by her own admission. I mean, admission. She, she talk, told her, you could watch the whole story how she talks about the flight attendant was with them most of the flight. Like, why? Why? And if Johnny had a problem the whole flight about him and this flight attendant, why was this flight attendant hanging out with you at the time? You, you just simply say, oh, Johnny, okay, you don't like this happening? Okay, then you don't do it, Amber. And if you don't like it, if you don't like the terms of that relationship, you end it. And, it, and Johnny didn't like her keep doing it. She, he should have ended it, right? So this is exploiting the security of a relationship to provide security and attention to the self, to the abuser. The abuser will triangulate to provide to and exploit the security in the relationship that you're supposed to have, that both of you are supposed to have, provide. And they do that to provide their own emotional security in the relationship. You won't leave me. And attention from everyone. Right? Histrionics are, are just so known for triangulating. I mean, just I, one of the biggest histrionics. Always got to be the center of attention. I mean, they'll do it right in front of you. They'll drag. I've, I've just seen multiple, because there's a lot of histrionics. So it's more common than most of the other um, disorders in the cluster B. It's the most common. And uh, I've seen it just, I mean, just multitude of times, just how the, the female in a relationship is sitting there flirting with other men. And I can see it in his face just by looking and just not liking it. So you have kind of a mild triangulation, kind of dressing provocatively if you don't like it. Now, I've had, I've had relationships where I kind of liked uh, the person I was dating kind of dressing a little provocatively a little sexy and stuff like that it, it, at the time I liked it I've, I've changed <laughs> not that I don't like it it's just whatever um, but but not everybody likes it you know I mean somebody if you don't have much security in your relationship you, you probably aren't going to want someone to dress provocatively it, it's that looking available it's appeasing to all sides isn't it if that's how the other person feels we're all different. There's different scenarios and environments that could exist. But if, if you already are insecure and your girlfriend is dressing super sexy and hot and beautiful out there, um, it, it may make you feel more insecure if she's not reassuring you that you're the only one, right? And you got kind of this medium triangulating, um, flirting right in front of you, um, bringing up names of people talking about them maybe more than the two of you talk about your relationship, right? Then you kind of have this max, this max triangulation, which I'm used to hearing a lot of in my work, my line of work. And I've seen it so badly where someone's dating two people, has two victims, they both, and they both totally know about each other, and they, this abuser, the controller, finds a way to kind of like vacillate between the two and always, you know, when I'm with this one, I'm gonna, we're going to talk bad about that one. And when we're with this one, we're going to talk bad about that one. But they're also going to use to get what I want. You know, hey, hey, okay, I know we're both talking bad about this one. But I will go back to this one if you do this, if you don't do this. Boom. And, and I think of this, I think someone learns this, can learn this with having two parents apart. Right? I'm going to go to dad's house. I love dad more. Oh, you don't you you have rules for me and you want me to do chore? I'm gonna go, Mom, mom doesn't. Mom's better. And they both kinda hate each other and talk bad about each other. It's almost like the same scenario. Um, and you're getting attention from both, just like mom and you would from mom and dad. Never committing, being available. So I got a comment from a viewer. Uh goes by the channel name of Max New. M-A-X-N-E-W. Hi Max, if that's your name. And uh, Max left a comment that I just found very interesting, and uh, you know I hear all kinds of stories, and and 
and I hear the same kind of stories, right? But I've never heard two of the same exact stories. And it doesn't matter how similar two stories are, I learn something different from each one. This is a good comment. I'm, that's why I'm gonna read it. Another variation, and this is pertaining to a video I made last, the other day, yesterday, is the imaginary friends that an abuser will invent. The abuser I encountered didn't have anyone. I assume no, no people, no friends, no nothing in their life, very common. So they made up people and would tell me what these people thought of me and had advice for me. They did this so that the abuse, so that they abuse me and not be accountable. Interesting. He goes on to say the friends, the friends were angry with, angry with me and didn't like me. And this person made it possible so that you try to get you to be angry with them so you didn't want to meet them either. Both hate each other so this can go on and exist. It dawned on you one day that you never met these people and that they in that this person always had an excuse why not why you can't meet them why it's not possible. Interesting comment thanks for sharing. Um, made up friends I wonder how long this went on for. I'd be curious to know if you feel if you see this video and you feel like uh, telling us that would be amazing. How long did this go on for? Incredible, incredibly sad for both of you. I mean, totally messed up that this person did this, abusing you and not holding a, being accountable for it. I can just they said it, they said it. They don't like you. They don't like it when you do this, controlling you like that, and it's just totally, totally totally exploiting the security of the relationship. It was just a constant threat that I'll leave you, I bet. That these people said, they, they don't like you, they want me to leave you. They want me to leave you, not me, they do. But I might, I mean, just insane, insane. That kind of, that, that's just so psychologically damaging. I hope you're okay now. Um, I have another example. I knew somebody that had a, uh, a boyfriend and they thought this boyfriend was cheating on them and couldn't catch him, right? And after after a while, it took a while, we realized this person wasn't cheating. This person was putting the doubt or suspicion out there that they might be cheating. Crazy. Crazy. Found found like panties, underwear, female underwear in the car. They weren't cheating. We know this. We know we can account for every second minute this person of their person's day. We know it took a while to realize they're not cheating. They just made it up. By threatening your security to make you insecure will make you jealous and insecure and don't leave me please. Are you cheating on me? And all these things might provide security for the abuser. False security. If they're worried and jealous and insecure that I'm leaving them, that makes me feel like they love me and they, they won't leave me. Just getting maximum emotional attention from them. Crazy. So if you look at yourself, okay, and you ask yourself, who are you? Who are you? And you know what you value. You, I hope you guys do have a standard list. With all, all the morals you value at the top, okay? I know you guys have morals that you value. If you just look at like loyalty and respect, Okay. These values are something we never compromise in a relationship. So if you value loyalty and respect, everybody in your life must too. And if that's true, and they do, this will never happen. If this happens, they don't value loyalty and respect. And if you keep them in your life, you are now compromising your own values. That's what a lot of you already did. If you look at what you need, your emotional needs, most important thing in the world, we need in our relationships, emotional security. Know that you won't leave me. Know that you'll be there for me. Know that you don't talk about me to other people. That you're committed to me and you invest in this commitment. Reassure me that you're committed. Emotional attention, caring how I feel, what this is doing to me, what it's causing me. Emotional connection, this would never happen. Never, never happen. And if this is happening, then our relationships are emotionally neglectful. And why? Why are we in these relationships that are emotionally neglectful? Are we even aware of it? If we're not aware of it, there's a problem. There's a problem, and this started a long time before these relationships, I promise. Probably in the first one. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think of this video, please. Please ask questions. 
always, I'll always try to answer them. And I would love to hear more of your experiences if you feel comfortable sharing them here. This is a pretty safe place. I try to keep it as safe as I can. So uh, I, you know, it, it can only value yourself by sharing your experiences, getting them out there, your truth, and uh, it can help others validate them. Okay. Thank you guys. Love yourself first. I'll see you soon. Bye.